the Patriotic Alliance leader has reflected on his transformation from a hardened criminal to now fighting crime. Mackenzie is a former convict who served time for armed robbery. He was also a notorious Americans gangster and leader of the prison's 26 gang. In today's video, we will learn more about South Africa's new Minister of Sport. In the early 2000s, he was part of a group of prisoners who exposed corruption at the Groot Vlei Maximum Security Prison. During his time behind bars, he met friend and PA partner Kenny Kunane, whom he claims saved his life from a brutal, in a Facebook post, Gaten McKenzie reflected on his humble beginnings. He shared, I was born in abject poverty. I was temporarily expelled from school because I questioned the limited careers on show at career day. I didn't see astronauts. I didn't see brain surgeons, etc. being put as an option. I so badly wanted to go jail. I wanted to obtain the street credentials. I wanted the street to respect me. I wanted people to fear me. I wanted everyone to know that I made my bones and served my time. After robbing banks, petrol stations, and casinos, Gayton was eventually sentenced to 17 years behind bars. I think uh, it is what the word says, you know, it's a guy that, that made a mistake, went to jail, and it came out that realized that that's not a life for him and that he's got more to offer the world. And I think that's what you call an, an, an ex-reformed uh, or a reformed uh, gangster or a reformed criminal. Is this somebody that got sick of crime or sick of what he has done wrong? What's your personal story, Gates, and for people that might not be entirely familiar with how it is that you became, A, to be a convict and later an ex-convict, reformed, as the word is now being used, how did that happen to you? Well, basically for me, it's that I think when I was 18 years old or so, I committed a crime. I was sentenced, I committed various crimes. I was sentenced to 17 years in jail. I spent 10 years of the 17 years in jail. I came out, uh, uh, got myself a, a little job. I started going to schools to speak to young people. I've seen more than 2 million young children across the country. And then I got involved in business and, and what I'm doing, I started a company called X Concepts, which a company that helps ex-offenders. And yeah, that, that's, that's my social responsibility company. And I'm also heavily involved in mining. He continued, I never imagined that I would reach the age of 25 in my life. We die before 25. It is the only thing we made peace with. We die and we kill. Attack. I became the boss of the prison. I controlled everything and everyone in that jail. Nothing happened without me getting my cut of the money. I was evil. I found God and changed my life in jail. I left jail a totally changed man. Inspiring his followers, he added, it's never about how you start, but always about how you end. But you see, Rashid is part of a system, a, a system that was created for young colored boys to join gangs, to feel safe in gangs. You know, for me, it's a cop out to just blame Rashid. You should blame the system. You know, there's the absence of hope in the Western Cape. You go to the Cape Flats, people get shot, people are scared. You can't live your life like that. You know, in South Africa, more people get shot at in the Western Cape than uh, at rhinos. Mm. But you swear rhinos are the only people, only things uh, that get shot in this country. And they're not even human beings. Gator. Go to the Western Cape or the Cape Flats and Gator. you'll see. Speaking to Power FM in 2017, Gayton McKenzie claims he decided to commit crime as a young boy. He told host Iman Rapetti, I already knew that I would be a criminal at the age of eight. That was my choice, and that's how I got involved. He continued, I robbed my first bank just before I turned 16. Then I was a fully-fledged gangster. I was one of the most wanted guys. I spent my whole youth in jail after being sentenced to 17 years. In jail, Gayton decided to turn his life around after he witnessed the brutal rape of an underage prisoner. The account eventually led him to become one of the Groot Fly Four who exposed widespread corruption at the Bloemfontein prison. He added, I called my mom and told him that I am changing my life. I told them I needed a book on how to operate a secret video camera. 
I took the money I made selling drugs and brought a video camera for us inside. When Gayton McKenzie stared into the helpless eyes of a 14-year-old victim of a violent rape in Grootfly Prison, the fearless, power-hungry gangster in him died forever. For seven years, McKenzie had witnessed violent crimes committed inside the walls of the Bloemfontein Prison. But helping the bleeding youngster who had been raped by 18 inmates spelt a Damascene conversion for McKenzie. At that very moment, says McKenzie, I became sick of crime, sick of all the rapes and robberies. I wanted to change my life. A couple of weeks later, he convinced three other inmates to help him film the routine rapes and other illicit activities in the prison. The secret video they released blew the lid on what was later to become the most sensational proof of corruption among prison gangs, warders, and inmates. Mackenzie was released from prison after serving seven years of a 15-year sentence for armed robbery shortly after the release of his sensational video. Today, he is possibly the most sought-after motivational speaker in the country, his diary filled for the whole year with engagements at schools and companies. Perhaps it's the roughness he still shows at the edges and his ability to talk from the heart that grabs attention as he tells his life story. Any person that tells you prison is a five-star hotel is either one, never been to prison, or two, never been to a five-star hotel. Because prison is no five-star hotel. It is these uh, guys, one or two or three of them with money, that lives like that. But the majority of prisoners live under fear, live uh, uh, with the risk of being raped any minute, live uh, among uh, even hardened criminals than themselves. So... This is not a true reflection of South African jails. This is a true reflection of money, of privilege, and, 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 and total disdain for uh, what you did uh, uh, for authority. They kept me in maximum. They refused to make me a medium. Rightly so, because my behavior was just appalling. And from what I could tell, it seemed like you were very well known already. Yes. How did they treat you in prison? What was your life like in prison? Respect. I had respect. I'm the one percent in jail. I got my bed made for me, my washing done for me. I was a respected man because I was already a made man when I came to jail. And I had a name. And I can't say that to anyone. I can't say that of everyone going to jail. Uh, well, almost no one. Yeah, just yeah. a few of us. I mean, like, I was, uh, I had a name, and uh, it, it, as we say in jail, fuck around and you'll learn. Yeah, nobody will fuck around with us. No, they say, uh, fuck around and you'll find out. Yeah. Yeah. In jail, they change it a bit. <laughs> oh, okay. They say, yeah. fuck around and you'll learn. <laughs> learn means you learn a lesson, you'll yeah, never yeah, forget. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but, so, did you have quite a lot of power, or were you just respected? I had all the power in jail. What, what kind of things could you do that others couldn't? If I wanted, I don't drink. I didn't drink in jail, but my friends drank. If I wanted uh, them to have whiskey, I, can, I could arrange. Uh, I would make you an example. I'm the first prisoner that there was a gang war happening in jail. And I didn't want to sign the peace. And they said, what do you want f to sign what must we do for you to sign? Because all the other gigs signed. I said, I love football. I want my team to go play outside. And the president authorities agreed to that. And my team went to go play in Heidedal, Clash Solomon Sports Stadium. And it's, it's not things I'm proud of, but I was not, I was a menace to society. I was a menace to, you know, they've got this thing where they put, where they put, uh, Prisoners, you can't be alone. You can you can either be alone in a single cell, but there can't be two of you. There must be three of you. Because if you kill somebody, it's only the two of you. There's no witnesses. Yeah. But they put you three of you. And, and I was in solitary confinement so many times, and they guys were just refusing to be with me. They're like, this man is mal. Prisoners, murderers were refusing to be locked up with me. Why did you get into a lot of fights? Yes, I was. I remember my cousin. Well, I mean, you're quite a small guy. I can't imagine you would hurt very anyone. Very small, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what my, are you like? What, like 60, uh, 70 kilos? Uh, uh, <laughs> 43. <laughs> no, they even got my cousin Isto. 
from another prison. Mm. Uh, because somebody said to him, the guy that he respects his sister, and they brought him from another prison. To try and calm you down. And he did, and he did, and, 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 and he did manage to really calm me down. I was just mm-hmm. angry, I was, a, I, was a young, I was young, I was colored, and I didn't give a damn. And a big guy as well, yeah. A very big guy, I mean, yeah. like, my first day in jail, I got into the biggest fight in prison. Can you tell us about Yes, that? I came in, and there's this guy that said, they wanted to teach me a lesson. Because my, my, my case was in the newspapers. And in prison, they would talk, hey, Gaten has been found guilty, he's coming. And somebody said, I'm going to show that Gaten. And I came in jail, and there's this guy's name is Veve. Veve. Yeah. And I just walked in, I gave a guy some money, I said, who's the most powerful guy there? And he said, he's Veve. I was sitting on a turn. I called another guy. I remember I had a 150 rent. I gave the first one 50 rent. I said, who's the most powerful guy? He said, Wewe. I called another guy. I said, who's the most powerful guy again? He said, Wewe. That's when I was sure it's Wewe. And I got the last 50 rent. I gave another guy. I said, what do they do here when you hit the prisoner? And he said, they take you to solitary confinement. And I realized these ones are going to want to kill me tonight to prove a point. And I gave him 50 bucks. I said, go tell that wardens I'm not scared of them. And I walked over to Vewe and I fucked him up. I tell her, I cut him open with my fist. I kicked the living daylights out of him. And the wardens beat me up and I went, my first day, I straight went to solitary confinement for three months. And I, I just think that for me, people ask me, why do I believe in God? I said, it's impossible for me not to believe in God. Where I was to where I am now, it cannot be. It's, it's, it's you know, it, it's, it's so hard to explain to people that who I was, man, I was a dangerous guy. You know, I, and people say that for people to fear them. I don't want you to fear me. I won't, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> no, you will. <laughs> uh, if we were in jail, you would have. Yeah, in jail, maybe, yeah. yeah. But what I'm saying is that people say the things to look big. I am. I have got everything I want or mm. that money can buy for me. So it's not about wanting to be feared, but who I was to where I am today, it's only my mother that truly understood that something must have happened and God happened for me to, to, to be who I am today. It's only God, it can be nobody else. I was, I look at the picture at my sister's house the other day, I was, I was showing my guys. There's 16 people in the picture. How many of them are alive? I'm the only one. I was in the middle of that picture. I was so emotional. I look at this picture and I looked for somebody other than me being alive in the picture. And everybody was dead. And... It is the hardest thing to explain to people how God has changed my life. So that's why I don't get offended when people bring up my past. Yeah. Because I don't live there anymore. Yeah. I'm saying to people, I was saying to the Sunday Times, when they interviewed me once, I said to them, I'm never going to look for a job. I've got businesses that's very successful. I'm, I'm, I'm quite all right. I have exposed a lot of corruption. That's what I want to talk about next. In jail. I have given millions to charity. I'm an in-your-face guy, and that's what gets through to the kids, he says. McKinsey's motivational talks are sponsored by Chubb Electronic Security, the very people he had to duck during his days as a bank robber and gangster. Chubb's managing director, Stephen Mundy, describes McKinsey as an orator who tells his story with no holds barred. McKenzie's 31-year life story sounds like a Hollywood script. It is difficult to reconcile it with his middle-class upbringing in Heidedal, a small colored township in Bloemfontein. He claims his parents were strict and that he excelled at school, but his attention was soon caught by flashy gangsters who ran the township. 